Hey, what's up guys? Talon back in the video. Um, just jumping in. Uh, I've been playing with the uh, 10850K now for about, uh, about an hour, hour and a half. And um, kind of gotten a little bit uh, familiar with its performance and what you guys can probably expect as far as uh, um, overclocking, stability, voltages that are going to be required and, and things of that nature. Um, so you can see here, uh, CPU-Z does recognize the chip pretty decently. Let me refocus the, the phone here. I am re recording this with a, an iPhone, so quality is not going to be uh, stellar. But you can see we got uh, just recognized it as a core i9 up here. I did check for a beta version, so CPU-Z hasn't been updated, but you can see down here it is recognizing it correctly as a core i9 10850K. Um, it doesn't know the revision. Uh, I'm, I, I do believe that all 10850Ks are the uh, QO. There are no G1 versions of this chip as far as I know, and that's off of Intel's website uh, for the spec. So that's the way I understand it, what I've seen um, so far. Pretty much it's a 10900K, uh, to put this in, uh, wrap it up. It is a 10900K out of box down clocked 100 megahertz across the board so that's uh all the different versions of intel's turbo boost that they have which i'm not going to go through and the thermal velocity boost which is the new thing on the uh the core i9s for the 10th gen uh that's also down 100 megahertz so tbb or thermal velocity boost goes up to 5.2 gigahertz uh, versus 5.3 gigahertz on the 10900K. Now, the biggest difference that I'm seeing so far is that the silicon quality, uh, and I've had four 10900K, so uh, one of which is amazing. Uh, the other three were pretty good. Uh, I didn't really actually, uh, the four I got from Newegg, um, and one was uh, three from Newegg, one was from OC UK, Overclockers UK, um, before they jacked up the price. Uh, I never got one that was an SP63. Uh, all of them were SP80 or above. I believe I had, maybe I had an SP76. I believe I had an SP76, yes, an SP80 and an SP82 or 83, something like that. Um, and they pretty much went in order of their ability. And then my best chip is an SP103, which was the first chip I got. Um, and I figured, why not try and get a little bit better chip? And that's from what I understand now, what I uh, basically through all the chips that are basically out there, all the chips uh, for 10900Ks, if you have an SP, anything above really like an SP, the high 90s are really above an SP100, you got a pretty good chip. SP103 is a very, very golden chip. So comparing that chip, that SP103 to this, the differences are huge really really big as far as voltage requirements now clock speed yeah uh this chip basically maxes out you hit the wall at about five gigahertz unless you really want to put and that's all core unless you really want to push the voltage uh to to levels that i would say you probably don't want to run daily uh my 10900 ksp 103 uh it can do 5.3 gigahertz all core the other uh sp chips that i had for the 10900 ks were doing uh they could I could give them to pass in a bench at 5.3. They would never have been real bench or prime 95 or anything like that. Anything really intensive, I wouldn't have been running it. That 5.2 would was doable on all of them. Even real bench, I was stress testing real bench and and they were stable at uh, 5.2. This chip, I don't even think I could get it to pass in a bench at 5.2. I can get it to pass in a in a bench with 5.1 gigahertz. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, I'm going to show you guys a few different things. So enough rambling. Let's kind of show you. I do believe I have, I might actually need to go back into the BIOS and set this. So we'll open up uh, Hardaway Info 64 here. Again, I am recording this with an iPhone, so, you know, please bear that in mind. I do have it set to 4,000 megahertz on the RAM. And I've also got it set to uh, 5 gigahertz on all cores. Kind of crank that up a little bit you can kind of see five gigahertz up there disregard the vid up top that's not that is important for really seeing chip quality but that is not the voltage it's running at my voltage that i'm running at is shown in cpu z and then also um right there and then i've got the uh, wheea error logger as well so that you guys can see if we're logging any sort of errors and then you can see that all the core temperatures and the motherboard vrm there We'll open up a, uh, I'll just open up Cinebench. 
We'll do a Cinebench R20 run. All right, we got it opened up over here. And yeah, so I do apologize again about the quality of this, but I tried to actually go live on YouTube and I don't have a thousand subscribers, so YouTube told me no. So whatever, I guess I need to actively try and grow to a thousand subscribers. All right, there's Cinebench R20. We will just kind of tilt this camera around and, and, and go from there. Let's go ahead and hit run. Now my SP103 chip can pass Cinebench R20, it can pass real bench, it's stable, like daily stable 1.21, uh, I believe, volt I'm running it. Um, this chip I have, I think, set to something like one point. This is for five gigahertz too. I think I've got it set to one point three six in the BIOS with LLC five. Uh, and again, my ridiculous ten nine hundred K is set to one point two one, um, and that drops to one point, uh, I believe, one point one one volt under load with the same LLC five. So you can see we're, we we did one point three six volt, and we're dropping down to about one point two five two volt under load. And this is just for five gigahertz all cores. So you can see we passed the test, no errors. We dropped to a minimum voltage, 1.25 volt. Looks like the peak temp down there. I'll try and focus that up a little bit more. Uh, 74 degrees Celsius. Looks like, yeah, about 72, probably average somewhere in there. Um, and we scored about 63.77. That seems to be pretty difficult for this chip. I, I have gotten it above 6,400, it's about 6,450. So it might be clock stretching just a bit right now. Um, and I do have to continue to do some testing on this thing to really see if it's you know fully stable at this. But again, you guys can see up there, Cinebench recognizes it as a 10,850K as well. We're gonna run it one more time. Uh, you know what? I had something open. Now, when you guys do your Cinebench tests, when you're comparing to other people's scores, you really need to make sure you don't have anything running in the background. Um, because when these guys are doing these benchmarks and they're they're posting these scores online, they could be running it in real time, which is also going to give you a nice boost in performance. And they're also making sure that they're running like a very minimal OS, right? Their OS isn't bloated with a bunch of stuff. Um, they're closing out apps in the background actively to, to get the best performance out of the uh, CPU because every little background task that may be running is, is taking up cycles that can be used for the, you know, the benchmark score that you're looking for. So we got up to about 75 there and 6378. So again, I closed something in between that test. We'll run one more time. And then we'll reboot. We'll go into the BIOS and this is about it. I mean, if so I paid $457 for this chip. I bought it because pretty much, I don't think there's anybody else out there that has a 10850K right now. I saw it listed online on a drop, uh, on a, uh, one of those um, drop shipment companies that I've used in the past to buy certain things. I bought laptop CPUs from them, um, various other things. Uh, I, think, I think I even bought a soundbar there once. Uh, basically they're sort of, and they're usually pretty cheap. Some of them are kind of expensive. Uh, some of these companies, they really rip you off. But this one, they are usually pretty good on their prices. Um, and again, I saw it on Friday morning last week listed for $457 for a Tray CPU. So that's not a boxed retail chip. Um, so yeah, about $63.78. So I think it might be clock stretching just a bit. We can go in the BIOS and we'll set it to LLC6 and see if it makes a difference. $457 for this versus the cheapest 10900K right now is $549 if you can find it in stock um, at Newegg. Uh, Micro Center and B&H are both charging $599. Uh, again, when you can find it in stock. So this for $457, it's a Tray CPU. It doesn't come with the three year Intel warranty. You don't get your box, which who really cares about that? And it's kind of a, it is a lower tiered, poorly binned 10900K. So you're, you're saving 
90 to 150 bucks, basically 90 to 140 bucks. Uh, and if you're just wanting to game, and you don't really care, and you know, you obviously have rendering performance and, and, and multi core performance if you need it. But if you're just looking to game and you just want to set the chip, and I run my 10900K at 5 gigahertz, I don't even overclock it anymore because really going from 5 gigahertz to 5.3, the jump in, in voltage required is pushing it pretty good. Uh, you're talking like probably 100 and, 160 millivolt, 150 millivolt, um, which is going to come with power consumption and temperatures, more fan noise. If you run it at 5 gigahertz versus 5.3, the difference in frames per second, especially because I'm gaming at 4K 144 hertz, uh, you're normally not getting 144 hertz anyway, so you're not CPU limited. So from my, from where I'm standing, from what I use it for, it, it doesn't make sense for me to kick the clock speeds up to 5.3 gigahertz. If, if, uh, and, and even if you were gaming at 1080p, 280 hertz or something, the difference in frames per second is going to be very minimal. Um, it's, it's really just a, it's just such a small difference. So I guess if you look at it from that perspective, if you're just gaming, 10900K is probably overkill anyway. Uh, but I could see an argument for buying this, especially if you have a big case and a lot of cooling and you don't really care about the power consumption. Um, I could see an argument for it. This is uh, probably a, a, a pretty good deal. Um, especially if you get it at $457. So let's go ahead and reboot.